let's hop back. Is there anything else we need to say about that tree? But well, yeah, what the, point, tree, what the tree, the tree itself, the, the, the tr- bottom. So you're going through this time. You're spending four or five years basically drinking and hanging around and doing drugs all up and down. Yeah, 365 ca- ca- days a year, bro. Uh, Cass Avenue. Mm-hmm. You're living like a rat, basically. Oh yeah, like, dude. Just like I was homeless, yeah. running around, uh, drinking on an excessive rate. Mm-hmm. I mean, from morning to night. Yeah. Passing out. I think that's where I get the sleep deprivation too. And uh, waking up because I didn't want to get, you know, if you sleep in an alley or somewhere, you wake up or you, or something weird. You don't want to be um, caught. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you're like, oh, sh-, you know what I'm saying? So I, I learned how to sleep standing up. I learned how to sleep. You know, like you jimmy a door in an apartment building, and then you go in, and go down in the basement towards the back end because there's like a washroom down there. Oh, yeah. And if you go past the washroom, there's another door, and then you could just go into the door and sleep in there for you know for the night, and then wake up early and get out of there. And then um, yeah, there's a lot of things that I've done like that. But <clears throat> so when do you eventually hit a bottom? Puberty. Enough? Uh, (laughs) when you when do you eventually hit the bottom that's like i can't do this anymore you're still painting as an artist yeah i'm painting and doing all kinds of stuff but the one thing that came to 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 the head of okay this is it i had this idea because after like i told you utilitarian is my lifestyle Mm. and it has to work even when i was a drunk and I ended up working at uh, a car dealership. I had a small little job, right? And uh, I ended up getting um, the work gear, the Dickies gear, mm-hmm. the, that re- repels yeah. oil and yeah. everything, right? Because you're working in the garage. Yeah. But I wasn't working in the garage. I was the guy that you came to yell at the garage because I told you what you needed to have done, mm-hmm. right? So we had these jackets. I still got one. It's in the closet. I keep it like a... Like a trophy. Yeah. Said my name. It says Tony. It was, yep. And it was blue, zip up, and I had the pants and the shirts to go with it. So it was the whole blue gear. Yeah. Those will resist, like, any type of thing. Yeah. So when I ended up getting fired from that job, I ended up, because, uh, you know, I ended up drinking again and just acting all little boggy. And what happened was uh, uh, I, I used to pass out in the streets in it. You know what I'm saying? And when I would wake up, I could just do this. Keep going. Yeah. Or if there's a stain, you know, yeah, get some right. water. Yeah. Boom. Oh, wow. It's great. Right? So, you, so that you took that, that was jumper my gear. that was from your job you got fired from, mm-hmm. but now you're basically, now it's gear. Now it's your house. Now it's gear. Yeah. Yep. House, life, yeah. the whole nine. Can't stand hair. Hair. Me. I ended up hanging out. Found a place to stay with someone that lived in a loft, and I, they had cats. She had cats. Oh. And they were miniature little white cats. Well, it was a big one, and then it had kittens mm-hmm. while I was there. And so it was these little white cats all over the place. So when I would enter, because she wasn't like the cleanest person on the planet, and it wasn't my home. Right. And I was just staying there because she would let me. And uh, I would take off my jacket. And take off my pants, fold them up, and then put them up way up high. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I... Cats. Yeah. I mean, you, you couldn't roll it. It was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible. Like, literally. And so, one day, after all these years, man, out of ducking and dodging and living in cars and, you know what I'm saying, fighting, getting busted, concussions, all this shit, man. I come home one night, drunk out of my mind. I mean, like when I say, like literally, so drunk till I lost who I was. For real, for real. Yeah. And almost I, an out of body drunk. Completely. And I've had a million of those, but I've always kept composure of some, certain things that meant things to me. Yeah. And uh, I walked into the place. I'll never forget it. I could feel my body right now as I walked in. It was like walking like a, like a scarecrow. And I couldn't get out of my clothes. I just needed to get some sleep. And I passed out on the bed, which was like cat heaven for these kittens. Yeah. Her bed was like cat heaven. So there was like a layer of cat hair, white cat hair, but I could care less. 
I just needed to pass out. So I passed out, and I woke up, and it was like a like a sunny day, but it was still cold. I'll never forget it. I think it was like a like an April day, you know, like when it's like really hot when the sun comes in, but if you open up the window, it's cold out. Mm-hmm. And I remember like I rolled, I, I could feel the sun on this side, and I was like, oh, God, right? And I'm waking up, and I look down, and as I roll over, I am head to toe in cat white hair, like head to toe. And I, bro, I don't know what it was, but it was that. It was that. It was that. It was the cat hair. That was the last of everything for me. I was like, all right, do you want to die? Or do you need to do something? This Full Exposure Podcast episode has been made possible through the support of Metro Health, University of Michigan Health, and Dr. Peter Hahn, who believe that creativity and the arts are essential to a rich, healthy, and fulfilling life.